Welcome to the 63 Motorsports Workbench. We'll go over a little bit of the Bank 1 timing tool setup as well as rebuilding the camshaft adjusters for the M156. Three of the timing tools, uh, three of the four timing tools has been set in this bank. This is Bank 1, the passenger side. On the right side is the intake and on the left side is the exhaust. This would be tilted at a 45 degree angle to the left with the intake manifold sitting right around where my right hand would be. So as you can see, a couple of things to note is um, when you get to your timing tools, you will have the lash locking tool, the camshaft bridge locking tool that will set itself on the notched part of the camshaft neck and you also have the sprocket locking tool which uh, will lower you a little bit here which is this silver plate right in front a little bit of play on the sprockets but it only goes on uh, it only goes on one way on both bank one and then you gotta flip it for bank two this is held on by uh, dowels that's actually on the cylinder head sometimes they do go missing you can get them do not know the part number of them at this point. If you want this held in place a little bit more secure, you can actually put a, an M6 bolt here. Also, same thing for the bridge locking tool for the camshafts over here. What I do want to focus on right now is the lash gear. When you're working on the adjusters, you should do them one at a time when you're doing the lash gear because this mechanism, the back of each adjuster has this lash mechanism that makes sure the adjusters do not float between the master gear's teeth. The master gear is actually right in the middle where my finger is, actually I'll point it to it. It's in between the two adjusters and that gear is driven by the chain attached to the crank. So this is the lash. I've removed this lash from the intake side. And what you have inside are springs and these springs are supposed to be activated. These springs will compress. And uh, what I've done with the tool right now is I've actually compressed this ring so this should come out easily. And I'll show you what it looks like when it is installed. So I've got the M6 bolt here. I'll take this off. This is a little bit exaggerated because not everything is tight, but uh, once I've taken this off, what you should have seen is the teeth Uh, the teeth that uh, the narrower teeth compared to the wider teeth adjusted to the left now this is quite tight in here and this will not really have any play compared to the intake gear that's on the right, while I'm holding this in place, this is moving ever so slightly and then it'll cause a rattle. On this side, while I'm holding the intake adjuster in place and moving the exhaust, this is actually really nice and tight. So that's what that does. Look at the locating pin here and uh, let's close this up again. And try not to drop too many things. So now that this is locked, the last gear is locked, uh, let's lock the camshaft bridge again. Put a single bolt in. And before I take this off, I'm actually gonna spin the cylinder head around and I can show you what the notches on the back of the camshaft look like for the flat bar. 
Here we go. We're at the back end of the cylinder head. This will be very well. Not it won't be as easy to see when you're working in your car, but uh, you can still see it. What I want y'all to take a look at is that the notch itself is not centered, and this is how you know you're on the wrong stroke of uh, combustion. So while let's say bank one does lock and also the bar has a wide and narrow aspect to it. So while this is bank one, while bank one locks, uh, it's in your best interest to take a look at bank two and make sure that the notches are on the right adjusted height. So they, it should be at the very top where they are level with the top surface of the cylinder head. If you find, let's say, um, the notches are horizontal on both sides. I can't turn this side right now. Okay? Oh yeah, I can. There you go. And the bar does not fit. You are on the wrong stroke of combustion and you would need to spin this again until both, the, both banks, bank one and bank two, are uh, aligned. Another thing to note too is where the neck of the camshafts are. You may need to move this camshaft using a spanner because what sometimes happens is that uh, this is just ever so slightly off by a hair. Like so, actually. like so and it's not going in what you would need to do is using a spanner I think it's a 27 and a half spanner or a wrench you can turn this just a little bit until it finally sits in so I thought this would be pretty cool to shoot and film we've talked about the front locking bar the bridge locking bar the flat bar in the back and the lash gear that makes sure that this is nice and tight and not floating around when it's being driven by the master gear. The thing about the M156 is it has a floating camshaft. So the covers that I've got in this are, they just, they're just open. They're not functional in any way, but to show how this works. So using these supply holes, the oil will push through and either time it, uh, retard the timing a little bit or advance it depending on which oil supply where oil pressure is going through and this is where the VVT works so this is why we call the camshafts as a floating camshaft I'm holding the gear assembly and the housing in place remember the housing itself is driven by the crank and the finer movements in between comes from oil pressure alone Back to this shot, I've locked the exhaust adjuster. We're gonna work on the exhaust first. When you're taking off the big 18 millimeter bolt, make sure that this bridge locking tool is in place after you've locked the adjuster, otherwise things won't fit. But what I do recommend actually is once, um, let's actually do that together right now. Lock the bridge. Uh, of the cams together so that when you're taking this 18 millimeter bolt out you've got a lot of uh, support to remove the bolt so with this in place and this lock to break this bolt loose once this bolt is loose let's take it out take the sprocket out These bolts need to be replaced. They are torque to yield and one time use. We offer replacements either in titanium or in ARP. As you're taking this out, be aware that there is a washer in the back, which came out this way actually. And this washer in the back, try not to drop it 
into the engine. These washers are also replaceable. Uh, actually, you can't use them a second time. They're one-time use. The part number for that guy is 156-051-0275. You need four. All right, now that that's removed, start to get your parts ready. In your kits from 63 Motorsports, you'll find these lock plates. This is a stage two. Please be aware they all look the same, but they're not. If you take a look at where the lock key is, as well as the keyhole for the housing, they're all in different spots. The lock keys do not, they all look the same, but they're not. Um, what you can see is the space between the lock, the keyhole on this is left of it. And the spacing between the two bolts on this keyhole is to the right of it. This is an exhaust adjuster and uh, you get two of them. Two of them that are absolutely the same. And you have the intake adjuster. Between the two holes here you got the keyhole but the space of it is to the left. And uh, these will replace your exhaust and these will replace your intakes. Since we're working on the exhaust we'll work with these. All right, so we brought the adjuster over here. Um, I've got my replacement parts. This is the stage two lock plate with the nice marbling. The surface of this is quite smooth. It's been engineered to be this way. Um, make sure that the timing events, this ensures that the timing events are actually uh, quite accurate between the two banks. You'll need a T30 and um, a couple of these or anything that's uh, rod like that will fit through these holes and I'll show you why as we keep going. So I'm going to take this off very gently and carefully. This is a pre-2011 adjuster which means that inside should be a thicker and longer spring than the one that we replace. Our springs also been engineered to be a higher tension than the 2011 plus uh, springs. They were revised in 2011 to be quite short. Um, so this has been engineered to be an improvement of that. Our, our pins are also an improvement to that. The corners have been rounded. Uh, so they're quite smooth and it should not actually erode the lock key wall on the new lock plates. So when we take this off with care, take a look at the wear that it's experienced. This has a little bit of wear where my fingernail is starting to catch on things and we will replace this cover with something that's pretty much the exact same dimensions but lightened and also strengthened so that it's more durable. And when it's spinning in higher RPMs, it will be more accepting of that mod. We'll set that aside. We do not provide this uh, washer, so keep this aside. And like I had said, the spring is a little bit wider and taller because it's a pre-2011, we'll replace that. There is a risk of the pin staying in place and not coming out. Uh, let's take a look at the wear on this. Let's take the veins out and the pin out. Put this in a clean spot. Old pin there. And this is our last gear that is actually compressed. Put that aside. Spin this around. This is held on by a locating pin on the back side of the housing. Put that aside. And this is the wear that we're dealing with. Cross reference your lock plates, make sure that they match. The spacing, so the lock key is in between these two holes, the spacing is on the right. The lock key in between these two holes, spacing is on the right. We'll put this aside. The locating dowel on the back side of this 
matches up with this female end on the lock plate squeeze and it should be quite snug we'll start reassembly now uh, the inner vein goes through the slot where the lock key the keyhole is in check for a function it's pretty good there before we put this in through the flash gear the orientation of this is usually the part number wherever that part number is look for the two adjacent holes and these two holes go and correspond to these two holes over here because when you're looking at this when this is in the engine you should be able to see the part number and the AUS or EIN EIN for intake AUS for exhaust when it's at 40 degrees so again the part numbers are here the two holes are here match those two holes with the two holes on the last gear here you may need to take a peek through make sure that it's all lined up and now it's lined up the inner veins moved I'm gonna move that to the unlock position and make sure that the keyhole is visible because this will determine that the function has been retained and it's working quite well grab the new pin oil it my hands are really greasy right now so that works remember this vein is in the unlocked position for the exhaust so we've retarded the timing a little bit if this was in the car spring in plastic dowel and plastic washer in and this is our new cover the marbling on it's quite nice at this point since it's brand new this actually doesn't matter uh, the orientation of it in relation to the whole assembly start the bolts one at a time we're also replacing the OEM bolts just because they do stretch as well and uh, we like things light especially in components that undergo higher RPMs well I see a little bit of dirt there work in a clean environment so this is how you would do one at a time uh, the in the garage let's say and you're taking your time doing this just because you don't really want to mess anything up all I'm doing right now is tightening everything by hand actually finger tight the bolts do have a little bit of a self-centering function to them when you do it incremental uh, torque of the bolts and they start to straighten out all right before these are torqued down um, grab these your rods and what we're doing is we're only ever so slightly turning this a little bit okay turning it but not locking it at this point this verifies that the function is correct and nothing is binding I'm gonna put this on the vise and torque these down but do it in a star pattern and then we'll check the function again okay we're back I did forget to say I ended up putting blue thread locker on the first two to three threads of the bolt so I uh, loosen everything up and also cleaned the um, the threads let the thread locker dry according to what the instructions say and then um, you should be at this point where once everything's bound up and torqued down we're gonna check the function again 
the timing on this adjuster has been retarded a little bit so we retarded the timing to check the function of the adjuster put these rods in again and we're going to advance the timing so that the adjuster can be in the home position before it is installed there you go and now it is locked this is quite tight um, when this is full of oil you really won't hear that and uh, it will be quite quiet so this is now in the home position ready for install we'll bring it back to the cylinder head and then show you how that's done all right we're back at the cylinder head let me bring my newly assembled adjuster here you're going to replace the new crush washer this is old but I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes put that in and make sure that this is dry and the back of the adjuster is also dry because this is the only thing keeping the adjuster attached to the camshaft I dried it off camera remember again the cylinder heads off kilter about 45 degrees to the left so we're gonna set this with the last gear locked set it up and before I proceed further I just want to make sure you can actually see maybe not So if you put marks on this, um, great, then you know exactly which teeth it belongs to. But I usually like to say that if this is out of 45 degrees in the car, I, of course I dropped the flat bar. This is pointed straight upwards, directly up to the sky. Get your locking bar back. It wouldn't fall on you because it's held on there pretty tight when it's inside the car. Alright, now this can be put back in loosely. And you can check that the O-rings are still in the right spot and have not jumped. Do this loosely because you need to make sure that this is also in the right spot using your timing tool. Okay, we're gonna move to the next one. Uh, it's the exact same process. Cross-referencing to make sure that you've got the intake lock plate. Locking the back bar so that the springs are activated. It keeps this really tight. And speaking of which, what I could do right now actually is show you what that back last gear looks like when this is removed. All right, so what we're gonna do now is take this last gear locking tool off so that we could use it on this next adjuster or whichever adjuster you're working on next. And if you see, this is getting pushed up because I don't actually have the bridge caps in place, but the narrower last gear is pushing to the left and that's what keeps everything tight. And that's what you should see this is exaggerated because again, the bridge caps are not locking the camshaft right now. Okay, you're gonna do this for the next one and um, we'll close up soon. All right, we're back. Washer is in. Putting this back into its home place. Part number matches where the lock uh, the timing tool for the last year is at the same thing here that way for the next for the next person or for you if you need to do this work again or take these out um, it's easy to access we'll grab one of these sprockets and install as well 
start that out. And just for the sake of speeding this up, we're gonna buzz that in. It's still spinning freely, perfect. And I've also added a couple of bolts on the cams so that they can actually hold this down a little bit more. You can see that the teeth, the narrower teeth, are now left adjusted compared to the wider teeth over there. Please pay attention to the narrower teeth on the intakes over here. Um, I'm actually going to try to lock this a little bit here. And I feel like this had moved a little bit. Yes, it has. There you go. So what happens when uh, it's not buttoned up. There you go. Still loose, still loose. We'll take this off. T30. At least that's the bolt that I'm using right now. And as you can see, now you can see that these narrower teeth are now left adjusted compared to the wider teeth again. Before we finally bolt and torque down the 18 millimeter bolts here, uh, we just got to make sure that these sprockets are lined up to where it's supposed to be. And this is always a bit of a battle for me. Maybe I'll start here. I think actually this is pretty close. Yeah, I believe that's pretty close. Maybe not. Oh, got it. And of course this one's button. There you go, got it. Alright, uh, let me move the camera back so that you can actually see what the heck is happening. There you go. Uh, it's just a matter of spinning this around and locking it in place. Now that this bar is flush against the cylinder head here and over there, comes the harder work of the whole thing. For the next step, once you're done the one bank, I would recommend using the bolts to secure both cams, as well as putting the flat bar in the back. On these, I'm just using a spare M6 bolt that I've used. There you go. This is locked. This is locked. The latch gear is also left adjusted when you're comparing the narrow to the wider gear. Everything looks good. Now get a torque wrench and follow your workshop manual. It is online. Uh, I'll post it in the description because for the life of me I can't remember but it's a there is a 90 degree turn at the end and don't be afraid when it starts to click on you because it will do that as everything is getting torqued down and this would complete the one bank we could move on to uh, bank two thanks for sticking with me throughout this video if you've got any questions uh, reach out on Instagram, it's 63motorsports. Uh, by email, it's info at 63motorsports.com. On YouTube, it is 63motorsports as well. Uh, check out our website, it's 63motorsports.com. Take it easy. Cheers. All right, for those of you that stayed, I've removed all of the timing tools here. Um, a little bit of a trick. 
you're only working with one timing tool set for the M156 is you can actually interchange back and forth and lock both banks using one tool and not using all four of them. Let's say that we were working on bank one, what you could do is move this, actually keep it and lock the backs of the camshafts and move this locking tool to bank two. This will allow you to lock the lash gear here and remove the assembly and keep both banks locked. Just be aware you will need to fiddle around with it because this is the main tool that locks and holds everything secure when you're taking the big 18 millimeter bolts off. So whenever you're taking the 18 millimeter bolts off, keep this bridge tool on. This is the strongest tool that you've got. I don't believe that flat bar will hold it in place. And once everything is loose on this side, you don't need anything that's for structure anymore. Move this to the other bank. When we're done here, we take this off. Everything's buttoned up. Bring this over and move this over to the other side and of course again if you're gonna if you haven't loosened the bolts in bank two use the bridge timing tool uh, for that as well have a good day you thought i was done this is how you know you're doing things wrong which i did i took everything off without using the last gear because i was trying to take this nice new adjuster out and wouldn't you know it, it's stuck now. If you're a shop and you're doing this, do not skip this step. Lock your lashes. So I'm gonna have to lock it because now it's a little bit stuck. There you go. And when it's locked, it just pops out. A little bit of a tidbit make sure you remove your old washers do not drop it in to your engine